In this section, we will talk about two basic rules of probability. Let's start with conditional probability. The notation for conditional probability is probability of B, this line means given A, probability of B given A, meaning what is the probability of event B occurring knowing that event A has occurred? For example, what is the probability that the ground is wet given that it's rained. Okay. This is an example of conditional probability. Given that it has rained, what is the probability that the ground is wet? The probability is pretty high. And the way you would write this in, in notation is what is the probability that the ground is wet given that it has rained? So the event that came first actually goes second. In this case, what is the probability that the ground is wet given that it's rained? So the condition will always go second. Think conditional because it's based on the condition that A has occurred. Okay, It's based on the condition that the, the second event listed, A, has already occurred. It has already rained, so what is the probability that the ground is now wet? The formula for conditional probability is the probability of B given the event A has occurred is the probability of A and B occurring divided by the probability of A. So let's see an example of this. Suppose we roll a six-sided die once. Find the probability that we roll a five, so probability we roll a five, given that we have already rolled a number that's greater than three. Okay, so let's break this down. Let's look at our sample space for rolling one die. Okay, we got one, two, three, four, five, and six. This is our sample space. These are the six possibilities when you roll a die once. Now, this event has already occurred, which means we've already rolled a number greater than three, which means our only possibilities are four, five, and six, because we're saying that we've already rolled a number that's greater than three. So our sample space is now reduced to four, five, and six. Okay, now what is the probability that we rolled a five given that we already rolled a four, five, and six? Well, what's the probability of rolling a five? There's only one five, so this will be one. Probability of A occurring, event A is that we rolled a number greater than three, which means we could have either four, five, and six. There are three different outcomes for event A, which is rolling a number greater than three. So the probability of B given A is one over three. Okay, the probability of A and B is that probability of rolling a five, there's only one. Probability of A that we rolled a number greater than three. Well, how many numbers are greater than three? We have three numbers, four, five, and six. So probability is one third. Okay, so we have to focus on the fact that we've already rolled a number greater than 3, which means our sample space is now limited to 4, 5, and 6. So that's the total number of possibilities. And out of that, how many 5s do we have? 1. So it's going to be 1 third. Okay, here's another example. Uh, suppose we draw a single card at random. What is the probability that the card is a heart? Well, how many hearts do we have? We have 13 hearts in a deck. And there are 52 cards total, so 13 divided by 52 is 1 fourth, or in decimal form, it's 0 0.25. Okay, second example, what is the probability that the single card we drew is a red? Well, in a deck of cards, you have 26 reds and 26 blacks, so the probability that the card is red is 26 out of 52. There are 26 total cards that are red, and the total possible number of cards is 52. If you take 26 divided by 52, this will give you give us 0.50. Now, let's do a conditional probability. What is the probability that we drew a heart given that we drew a red card? Okay, now let's think about this. This condition has already occurred, which means we've already drawn a red card. Well, how many red cards are there in a the deck? There are 26 red cards. So our sample space now goes from 52 cards to 26 cards because we're assuming 
that we already drew a red card. So how many red cards do we have? We have 26. Since that event's already occurred, our sample space is limited to 26 red cards. Now, out of those red cards, what is the probability that we drew a heart, given that we already drew a red card? Well, there are 13 hearts, so 13 out of 26, this will give us 0.50. So if you think about it logically, there are 26 red cards. Half of them are hearts, half of them are diamonds. So the probability that, given we already drew a red card, one of them is a heart, is 1 half, or 0.5. Okay, let's go the other way. What is the probability that we drew a red card given that we already drew a heart? Okay, so let's think about this. How many is we, we already drew a heart? Okay, so how many hearts do we have in the deck? We have 13 hearts. Whatever the condition is, that's going to be at the denominator. Because if you look at the formula, probability of A goes on the denominator. Probability that the event has already occurred goes on the denominator. So moving forward, we, we know we drew a heart. How many hearts do we have? We have 13 hearts. So that's going to go on the denominator. Now out of that, how many hearts are red? Well, every heart is red, so 13 out of 13, which is going to be 1 or 100%. So again, logically, if you think about it, if we know that we we've, we've uh, the card we drew is a heart, it has to be red because every heart is red. So the probability that we, we draw a red card given that we've drawn a heart is going to be 100% or 1. Okay, let's talk about independent events. Two events A and B are independent given that the probability of B given A is the same thing as probability of B. In other words, the event A occurring has no bearing on event B meaning knowing the outcome of A has no effect on the probability of B. In other words, the probability of B remains unchanged when we know the outcome of event A. Okay, here's an example of two independent events. Okay, event B is that you eat a burrito for lunch. And event A is that you studied for your exam. Okay, so what is the probability that you ate a burrito for lunch? It could be, if you, let's say you ate a burrito once in a week, it could be one out of seven. Now, given A, given you studied for your exam the night before, does that change your probability of eating a burrito? Absolutely not. The, those have no bearing on each other. So these events are independent. Whether you studied for your exam and whether you ate a burrito, they have no connection whatsoever. So these events are independent. If you recall the, um, the example of raining and the ground being wet, those are not independent because when it rains, the ground is going to get wet. So those are dependent events. These are independent events. Let's talk about the multiplication rule. The probability of A and B is the probability of A times the probability of B given that A has already occurred. If the events are independent, then probability of A and B is probability of A times probability of B. Because remember, if the events are independent, then probability of B given A is just the probability of B. So this gets replaced with just the probability of B if the events are independent. Here's an example. Suppose that in a particular town, 26% uh, of people met their spouses in college. If two people were selected at random, what is the probability that they both met their spouses in college? So first of all, we got to determine, are these events independent? So we pick two people. Okay, this is person number one, person number two. Whether or not this person met their spouse in college does it have any kind of bearing on whether the second person met their spouse in college? It doesn't, because they're, they're two separate people. So because of that, these events are considered to be independent. So let's look at the formula. Probability of A and B, if they're independent, is probability of A times probability of B. So this is going to be probability of A and B equals to probability of A times probability of B. So what is the probability that they both met their spouses, so A and B occurred in college? 
probability that the first person met their spouse in college is 0.26. The probability that the second person met their spouse in college is also 0.26. So 0.26 times 0.26, this would equal to 0 0.067. 0 0.0676, which we can round to 0 0.068. When events are independent, you simply multiply the two probabilities together. Here's another example. There are seven colored balls in an urn, three red and four blue. You draw two balls at random with replacement. Okay, now let's talk about with replacement. With replacement means once you remove a ball, you record that probability, but you put the ball back. So with replacement means that you go back after each, after each draw, you go back to the original conditions. That's, that's what it means with replacement. Okay, so since this is with replacement, after every time you draw a ball, we go back to the original conditions because you put the ball back, so everything resets. What is the probability of drawing a red ball first, then a blue ball second? Okay, so we have seven total balls, three of them are red. So we want the probability of first drawing a red ball and then drawing a second ball, uh, a blue ball. The second one's going to be blue. So this will equal to the probability of drawing a red ball times the probability of drawing a blue ball. And again, remember, this is with replacement. So if you draw a red ball, there are three reds out of seven total. Now, you put the red ball back, so everything resets. Okay, the the, the urn goes back to the way it was. So now there are four blue balls out of seven total because, again, we put the red ball back, so there's still seven balls total. If we take 3 over 7 times 4 over 7, this would equal to 12 over 49. Okay, or you can, uh, you can um, convert that to a decimal. Okay, what is the probability of drawing a red than another red? So probability of drawing a red and another red. Remember, this is with replacement, so we put the ball back um, in, the, in the urn. So we have three red balls out of seven total times, these are, uh, this is with the replacement. So again, the second red ball, there's still three red balls in there because we put the, the ball back out of seven total. So this will give us nine out of 49. Okay, we will talk about the last uh, three problems in class.